you didn't go to film mm-hmm. school. You, this is no, not what you did. No, I couldn't did. get in. Couldn't get in. They looked at your early work and said, so, that no, this guy has no, no future. Exactly. No. When you're starting out, particularly, you have to play to your strengths. You have to do something that really excites you. I think it was Stanley Kubrick who said, the best way to learn how to make a film is to make a film. And I certainly found that to be the case. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 Believe Nation! What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and use it to make a difference. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from making his first movies at age seven to not being able to get into film school to now becoming one of the most influential filmmakers of the 21st century. He's Christopher Nolan, and here's my take on his Top 10 Rules of Success, Volume 2. Enjoy! Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, my personal favorite, just start. You didn't go to film mm-hmm. school. You, this no, isn't what you did. No, I couldn't did. get in. Couldn't get in. They looked at your early work and said, so, no, this guy has no, no future. Exactly. No, this exactly. is all over. So were you watching other movies too? I've always watched movies. I mean, I've always been a student of films. Um, and I think it was Stanley Kubrick who basically said, if you want to learn how to make a film, just make a film. Mm-hmm. And that was sort of my approach. I started making films when I was seven years old on Super 8, you know, and I, I never really stopped. Um, and then, my first feature uh, following, you know, was made on 16 mil with friends who just did it on the weekends and put it together. Pretty cheap. Very cheap. I mean, uh, yeah, all told about $6,000. So, so <laughs> yeah, that was very, very <clears throat> cheap. Rule number two, distinguish yourself from others. When you're starting out particularly, you have to play to your strengths. You have to do something that really excites you. And whatever's different about that, and in the case of following the, the non-linear structure was a a somewhat unusual choice. Um, but it's those things that are the strength of the project. Uh, it's the things that you can bring to what you're doing or bring to the filmmaking craft that maybe not everybody else is doing, maybe not everybody else can do or has thought to do. That's what's going to distinguish the thing. So it might seem in some ways more difficult or seem like something that would make the project more difficult to to sell when it's finished, you know, what, what have you. But for me, I think the answer was definitely to try to play to my strengths and the things that I personally uh, was passionate about. Rule number three, try everything. I think, it, I think it was Stanley Kubrick who said, the best way to learn how to make a film is to make a film. And I certainly found that to be the case. Um, I didn't go to film school and I just have always made my own films. I started at a young age. Um, and when you're doing films just with friends, with no money, you know, on a shoestring, uh, you have to be able to do all the jobs because when we made Following, for example, um, we were just shooting on Saturdays. We all had jobs in the week. And so not everybody would turn up and sometimes you'd be recording sound and sometimes you'd be shooting the film. And, uh, you know, you really had to know a bit of everything because you didn't quite know you know, who your crew was going to be on, on the day. And, and it's a wonderful way to learn everything. And, and the larger the films have become, I think the more I've been able to appreciate the learning that I did by doing. And I know enough about every job on set to sort of be a pain in the ass to everybody. <laughs> you know, just enough to not say I can do your job, but just to give them an idea that I'm paying attention to what they're doing and that I'm asking for a particular uh, approach. And um, it gives you confidence as a filmmaker. Uh, I recommend it to any young filmmaker starting out, is just try everything. Try recording sound, try shooting, try lighting, you know, try a bit of everything, uh, except maybe acting. But. Um, <laughs> If you can get your head around all those different disciplines, uh, you don't feel quite so at the mercy of, of your crew. And there's an interesting relationship as a director between yourself and the people who, who work for you on set, uh, which is they're looking to you for leadership and, and guidance. Um, and I think they also want to feel like you care about their job. And I think one of the ways of showing somebody that you care about their job you know, is to know about it and be able to engage in a conversation with 
the sound department about microphones and which microphones they're using and, and things like that. Rule number four, focus on the audience. To me, shockingly, you've never been nominated as best director. Does that kind of thing bother you? Uh, no, I mean, I've been working in a pretty commercial end of things. You know, yeah. I, I've been making movies for audiences, you know, and so I, I'm always, you know, people often ask me about that sort of stuff and it's like, you know, it, it'd be thrilling to be nominated for an Oscar as a mm -hmm. director. I mean, obviously I've grown up watching the Oscars and I'm a member of the Academy proudly. Mm -hmm. And I have been nominated for writing, which mm -hmm. I was very, very proud of. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, for me, the movies were all about the audience. And with these films I've been making, they're about reaching a wide audience, um, really speaking to a lot of people. And so that's really the, the, guiding, the guiding principle for me. And if that's not necessarily, um, you know, what speaks to, you know, Oscar voters or the rest, it's not something you can worry about. You just gotta get on and do the film that you believe in. Rule number five, get experience. For me, everything I did to do with the camera, to do with editing, was useful experience uh, and stuff that, that paid off uh, when I came to actually, you know, make features. And really everything you do, you, you learn from, in terms of any time you're shooting something, a short film, particularly a short film, when you try to write the script for a short film, it's very difficult to write a short film. I think in some ways it's harder than for a feature to have a complete idea in just a few minutes and have a beginning, a middle, and an end, you know, have a, an appropriate conclusion. So you learn a lot about narrative structure doing shorter films. But really every job I did, including uh, you know, corporate videos and industrial training films and things where I'd have to go to a company and throw up some lights and shoot interviews, you know, with executives and things like that. Uh, you're always learning about your craft. You're always learning about, uh, you know, how to balance the pragmatic requirements, the race against time, uh, using the equipment you've got in a short space of time to sort of get something that you can, you can use. It's all useful experience. Rule number six, challenge yourself. I try to be all about story um, and then as I'm writing create visuals or situations that I actually don't know how to do and I try to take my director's hat off when I'm writing and write things that I I then come to as a director and I I say I have no idea how to do this I have no idea what this will look like how to visualize it because that's when you know you're challenging yourself and it's through that challenge you then put together a great team of people and through that challenge you find something that you haven't done before. You find something fresh and, and different. And that's really the, the fun part of filmmaking, that, that challenge. Rule number seven, care deeply. Well, I think making films is always about facing insurmountable, seemingly insurmountable odds. Anybody who tries out to go out and direct a film um, and has to get a budget, has to get a crew together, has to surmount all kinds of obstacles. And so I'm just trying to position uh, and empower filmmakers to, to view their choice of medium as one of the things that they have to fight for. Uh, and none of these fights are easy, uh, particularly when you're starting out, uh, but they're all worth fighting for and they're all part of that tension and that process that filmmakers go through to tell the stories uh, that they want to tell. And I think some of that tension can actually be uh, productive because you're made to think about what's important to you and what you really care about. And what we want to see as film goers on screen are stories and presentations that the people who made them care deeply about. Rule number eight, stick to your guns. I think really the only useful advice I ever got in terms of, you know, trying to figure out your way in to the film business, the film industry, is to get yourself a script and hang on to it. Um, it's that idea, that screenplay, that, that concept, you know, whatever that's gonna be, that's so important. And you have to stick to your guns, you have to find something that you can do that maybe other people couldn't do. Uh, and even if that seems different or doesn't fit into people's expectations. That's what's going to distinguish it if you can do it successfully. So I think it's really about sticking to your guns and you know, doing something you passionately believe in rather than uh, trying to appeal 
to some desire that you imagine other people have for what they want to see in a film. I think you have to be true to your own passion and your own sense of what excites you as a storyteller. Rule number nine, do it all. When I started making studio films, um, it was very much the, the practice at the time that you would have a large second unit, uh, which is another director directing shots that will cut into the film. And coming from independent film, I couldn't get my head around that at all. To me, each shot, if it's important enough to be in the film, you know, if it goes on that screen, um, I feel like I should be shooting it. And so for me, I, you know, I like to say the screen is the same size whether the shot is small or whether the shot is, is large, uh, it's all storytelling information. And the other thing I've, I've learned over the years is if, if you talk about inserts of an actor's hands, for example, an actor performing an action, there's performance in those gestures. And you can really, you can really see that. Um, and any time in any of my films, there's been something where we've, we've had to do it without the actor or put an insert in or whatever it always bothers me afterwards. You never quite get um, that level of performance, that level of integration. And so the idea of embarking on a film and sitting down with the producers at the beginning and saying, okay, well, I don't need to direct those parts or those parts, I've never understood that. To me, if I'm the director, I have to be shooting all of the shots that, that go in the film. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is be awesome to work with. Where are we going? We have to go to Dunkirk. He's like the ultimate gaffer. That guy. Yeah, he is. He's just the skipper. He sees everything in the film at once. Because he, because he pulls time around so much in his films, he has to. And, you know, obviously you've got your own little moment to think about, mm. but that guy, he sees everything. He, he, he's a man with a plan, very much so. Yeah, he was very, very approachable to talk about it. I, I found him so. He, he didn't talk about it much on the set, but, but when I met him, first of all, we talked extensively about the script and the story, and I had questions about the what happened in the gaps in between scenes, as there was room for different possibilities there, and I wanted to know what he had imagined. He was, he was really open to you offering whatever you had going on. I think partly the reason he cast us because he trusted our taste and he, he, he wanted us to bring what we had to the floor and he completely allowed that. You know, you, you, were, you were coming up with all sorts of suggestions and he would, you know, he wrote the script and uh, he'd, be, he'd be like, well, let's try it and throw it in, try it. He wasn't precious about it at all, uh, which yeah, really, was... really made a, a huge difference for us. It gave us a real freedom to play about. Yeah. He doesn't talk about things he doesn't need to talk about, Chris. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he's, he's actually quite shy, I think. And on set, he had so many things to think about uh, yeah. because everything is real in front of the camera. So there was an enormous amount of stuff to coordinate uh, amongst the unpredictable nature of the ocean and the weather and things like that. There, there was one moment where the Messerschmitt was coming over the Moonstone and uh, I was on the, the, the bow of the ship, the bow of the boat, watching this come over and Hoyter had the camera just right here and Chris was stood next to him with his monitor and it comes over and I'm just like... And no, they're the bodies. And Chris was like, caught, caught, we, we need to go. He can't smile, Tom. You can't smile. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. It was just so cool. <laughs> now I've got a really special bonus Christopher Nolan clip on how to have role models. But before that, I have three questions for you. I want to make sure we're moving from just watching another video to actually taking some kind of action. So the homework for you guys today is to think about these three questions. Question number one. What is one small thing you can do today to move one of your big projects forward? Question number two, how are you going to challenge yourself this week? And question number three, what experience do you need to gain to be among the best in your industry? Write it down for yourself, talk about it with a friend, or leave your answers in the comments below. Either way, I want you moving from not just watching another video and consuming, but to actually taking some kind of action in your business or your life. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon and enjoy the bonus. I've been greatly influenced by uh, filmmakers of the past, hugely. Um, I always point to George Lucas's first Star Wars film as a, a seminal influence on, on me. It was the first film that I remember that, that really just opened up the possibilities of, of what you could do with movies. Ridley Scott has always been a tremendous influence on me. I've loved the worlds he's created. That, 
textured quality of those things. Terence Malick is a huge influence, and Stanley Kubrick is a filmmaker that I've always greatly admired, although he's one it's difficult to try and imitate or learn too much uh, from specifically, but uh, as an inspiration, just as a great genius of, of cinema. And then more recently, um, specific to Dunkirk, I think, you know, the cinema of Alfred Hitchcock, uh, Clouseau, uh, filmmakers working in the suspense genre were very important to me. Altruistic, world domination, honey empire, right? I'm grateful, I understand why I'm here. I think because I am so open. I wanted to think and see. It's a bloody brief life. All of you have the potential for enormous success. If you want to know what Gary V, DJ Khaled, Oprah, and others know about empire building that most people miss, check out the link in the description for a free bonus video.